Oh, Attorney General, down here on the end. Thank you. Um, I know we've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up again. The Holy Land Foundation trial that occurred in Dallas, uh, convictions obtained in 2008, there were boxes and boxes of documents that were provided to the people that were convicted of being of supporting terrorism. And I would like to ask again for Congress to be allowed to have copies of the same things the people supporting terrorism got before they were convicted. Will you provide those documents without us having to go through a formal subpoena process? Yeah. The very ones they got. Yeah. I, again, I, I, I'm just, I, I have this note here because I asked this question. Uh, we did, in fact, promise you access to those documents that were made public in the case, but now what my people tell me is that we never heard from your staff to make those arrangements. We'll promise to make them available to you. Um, and I, what I would just ask is to have your staff contact mine. And well, then we'll work that out, all right? You make that happen. Now, also, you had mentioned that the FBI did a good job in following up the lead from the Russians about uh, Tomerlin Sarniev. Um, do you know what questions uh, FBI agents ask of Tomerlin to determine that he wasn't a threat? I don't know the specific questions. Do you know what they would have asked if... Uh, uh, who his uh, favorite Islamic writer was? Are they allowed to ask those questions? I know. Well, either you know or you don't know. Were they allowed to ask who his favorite imam was? Were they allowed to ask about the uh, mosque he was attending at Cambridge or had been in in Boston, from what I understand? Were they allowed to ask those questions? I know a good deal about what was asked of him in connection with the interaction that occurred, um, but that is potentially part of this ongoing case, and that is why I'm a little hesitant to... Well, it's also uh, in trying to determine how the FBI blew the opportunity to save people's lives by, by accepting the Russian information and, and, and following up on it, because what we have dealt with, and, and I've, you know, I shouldn't have been classified, but the information being purged from FBI documents has been classified, and I've reviewed that information. I'm aware of uh, what has been purged in the efforts to uh, avoid offending anyone who is, is uh, Islamic. Uh, I'm, more, uh, I'm not concerned about if, uh, offending anybody that wants to blow us up. Uh, but I am concerned about religious freedom, as, as, uh, which is another topic with the IRS. But uh, were you aware of the Cambridge Mosque where Tomerlin was attending back at the time that the Russians gave us that information? Not at that time. Uh, All right, well, let me I tell you, he was attending a mosque in Cambridge, and uh, obviously if you're not sure about that, you would probably not have had anybody provide you the organization papers for the Islamic Society of Boston that was uh, also the founder of the mosque in Cambridge, a guy named Alamudi that I'm sure you know is doing 23 years for being involved in terrorism, also uh, working with the Clinton administration uh, back before he was uh, arrested and then convicted and sent to prison for 23 years. But he started the mosque. What kind of follow-up was done on the mosque at Cambridge and the mosque at Boston where you had a convicted terrorist uh, that was involved in, in the, the uh, organizing? Do you know what they did about it? Well, I can say at this point is that I think that the what the FBI did in connection with the information they received was thorough. There are there questions of the Inspector General? Well, thorough is an opinion. I'm asking if you knew specifically about the mosque at Cambridge, who founded it, that a terrorist founded it, the one that he attended. And, and it sounds like from your answer you feel satisfied it was thorough, but you don't really know what they looked at. So let me, uh, let me move on uh, then. My answer to the question is that the FBI, as I said, I think was, was thorough, um, but there, was, there, there were problems that were not of the FBI's making in, with regard to their... Look, the FBI got a heads up from Russia that you have a radicalized terrorist on your hands. They should not have had to give anything else whatsoever. That should have been enough. But because of political correctness, there was not a thorough enough examination of Tomerlin, 
to determine this kid had been radicalized. And with, that is the concern I have. On the one hand, we go after Christian groups like Billy Graham's group. We go after Franklin Graham's group. But then we're hands off when it comes to possibly offending someone who has been radicalized as a terrorist. And I appreciate Ms. Chu's comment. There were people concerned about possible profiling. But I would submit, Attorney General, there were a lot more people in America concerned about being blown up by terrorists. And I regret very much my time has expired. Well, let me just say this. Uh, you've made statements as matters of fact. And I, I, I you know. You point out one thing that I pointed out that I said that was. The time of the gentleman has expired. The Attorney General may... Mr. Chairman, I would ask a point of personal privilege. He said I said something as fact that he doesn't believe was. I'd like to know specifically what it was so that Regular I can... order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. The gentleman from Texas should suspend because the Attorney General has the opportunity to answer the question. Once he's completed the question, if the gentleman has a point of privilege, personal privilege, he can Thank exercise you. it. But at this point, the Attorney General gets to answer. Uh, from, I, the only observation I was going to make is that you state, as a matter of fact, what the FBI did and did not do, and unless somebody has done something inappropriate, you don't have access to the FBI files. You don't know what the FBI did. You don't know what the FBI's interaction was with the, so, with the, with the Russians. You don't know what questions were put to the Russians, whether those questions were responded to. You simply do not know that. And you have characterized the FBI as being not thorough or taken um, a, exception to my characterization of them as being thorough. I know what the FBI did. You cannot know what I know. That's all. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that is simply the reason I did not assert what they did or did not do. I asserted what the, uh, my the point of the part, gentleman. I cannot have. A regular order. Challenge my character, Mr. 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 Chairman. My regular order. Without having the gentleman will to respond to that. The gentleman is. If the gentleman believes that he has a point of personal privilege, he can state it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a point of personal privilege. He said that I do not know that of which I spoke as being true, and the Attorney General uh, is wrong on the things that I asserted as fact, and he. Uh, has to understand the reason I ask questions specifically about what the individual Tomerlin was asked was so I would find out and the Attorney General then sits there and actually Mr. Chairman I would still assert the same regular order uh, that so, I did the first Mr. time. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman I would, still, I would still point out regular order. The gentleman from Texas will suspend the gentleman's characterization of the Attorney General's answer is not appropriate exercise of the gentleman's right of personal privilege. Right, so Mr. The gentleman Chairman, point of personal privilege. Right. The gentleman may complete his statement and then we'll move on. All right, thank you. Uh, the Attorney General made statements that what I said was not true when actually uh, the reverse is what happened. I asked the Mr. Attorney Mr. General Chairman, what Mr. was Chairman, asked. Reg this is order. my and point I, of personal no, privilege, and then the gentleman well, responded. No, it's not a point state. of personal privilege. Yes, it is. So when you attack somebody's integrity and say they made statements that were not true, then, of course, uh, that is, uh, raises a point of personal privilege. But the Attorney General failed to answer my the questions about what was asked. After but he went back and 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 regular order, Mr. Chairman. Aspersions the on my spend. asparagus. The, the, the gentleman is entitled to state of personal privilege, which he has now done, and we will move on. Thank you. But he does not have, under a point of personal privilege, the opportunity to characterize the answer of the witness. So uh, uh, the, the oh, time Mr. of the gentleman... The, All I was saying, for the record, was that the Congressman could not know unless, as I said, something inappropriate has happened with regard to the trans... Or unless the Attorney General the answered will my questions as I asked, the and then we would have had the answers. He could not know the answer. He could not know. There couldn't be a basis for uh, the assertions he's made, not the questions, but the assertions that he made unless he was provided information, and I would say inappropriately, from members of uh, the FBI or people who were involved in the very things that he questioned me about. And I do not think that that happened. 